Hello YouTube modeling community. This is Rusty here. Uh, it's Friday. Uh, wait for a little notification to get out of my screen. There we go. Uh, well anticipated day. Let's, let's say that. I'm super stoked about this build. I've been wanting to build it for a long time. Uh, from what I see, you guys down in the comments, you, you're really liking it so far and you can't wait to see more. So we're going gonna, gonna to try to make this as short as possible, but yet I'm going to go over a couple tools that I use, show you guys what they are, uh, tell you where you can get them. Uh, dirt cheap. I don't, I do buy expensive tools, but a lot of the stuff I buy is just as cheap as I get. I'm on a budget, just like the rest of y'all. I'm not rich. Uh, I'm not trying, well, I'd like to try to get rich, but I'm not rich. Uh, I do do ball on a budget. So, uh, wherever I can find a bargain, I'll pass it along to you because I'm the same way. I may have $10 one month to be able to spend, if, if that. Other times, I may have a few hundred. Uh, a lot of that depends on how many commission bills I do, how quick the money turns around, comes in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, usually, I, I, when I do those kind of things, a commission build, uh, I try to take that money and put it right back into my hobby. That way I can buy the better tools, the you know better paints, whatever. Uh, so, enough about that. But we're going to go over that. We're going to go over what I've got done so far. Uh, let you guys see everything. I've got a few questions for y'all out there. Uh, get your opinion on it and uh, help me make a decision. Uh, I, and I do have a a request, if if at all possible. If not, no big deal. Won't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, so start off by saying thanks. Uh, I think I'm at 114 subscribers last time I checked, which was last night. Uh, I've not been on yet today. Uh, I spent the first part of this morning catching up on some of you guys' videos. Uh, that's what I try to do every morning when I have my coffee. Uh, and, you know, great comments, great questions. Uh, Leadhead Brother, you're rocking it, man. I, I, I love your builds. Matthew, over at Model Car Videos, Brother, you're one of my one of my top channels that I watch. I love your content, uh, just for the way it is. Uh, don't change, brother. I, I, I like I like your format and the way you do it. Uh, there's a million other, and I'll shout out from time to time who they are. Uh, but uh, there's probably about 50, 60 people that I watch on a regular basis, uh, and you guys are my inspiration a lot of times many builds that I've done, somebody here on YouTube has been an inspiration to me, whether it be for the whole build or uh, a certain part of it. So just know that. And I thank you for that. Uh, and I thank you for all the likes, everything else, the thumbs up, thumbs down, comments. It, it don't matter. I appreciate it all. So, you know, on that note, if you like these videos, you know, like them for me, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I got a lot of great things coming up uh, till the end of this year. And then starting off next year, it, it's going to be a, a big, big year here at, at the shop. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Uh, turn that bell notification on. That way you know when I'm when I put a video up. Uh, other than that, uh, let's get started. So I'm going to turn this camera around and we'll get started. Okay, so you all know that's my muse. Um, I'm in thrall with this truck. I have found a couple other little clips of it, but nothing that helps me as far as the roof is concerned. Uh, I did get a good picture of the back end of it and how the exhaust rolls out. Still don't know for sure what engine it's got in it. So I've I've already got that part done. I'm just, I'm winging it myself. Uh, I will make a few changes on my truck. Uh, I don't like to 100% replicate without the permission of the owner of the vehicle. Uh, it's just me. That's how I do it. You know, I, r I really don't have to, but I, that, I like to do that. I like to get them involved. They get excited about it, see it, you know, and uh, 
hopefully in return, they, they might want me to build one for them. That's nice to go around to car shows and have a little replica of your actual truck or car or dragster, whatever it is. So, but this is my muse, my inspiration, and we'll, we're going to start off showing you the truck the way I've got it sitting right now. Nothing's glued together as far as body wise, but just to show you a big LSX fits perfect. I mean, light modification to the firewall, uh, transmission tunnel, but, I mean, it was just a little shaving, a little sanding, nothing that you can really tell. So, uh, let me, let me tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to turn you back. So I'm not jumping this camera around so much. While I'm talking to you, I'm going to take this thing apart. And we'll go over the, the sections, what they are, what I've done. Uh, like I said, nothing's glued in on this body yet. I still have some a little bit of body work to do. Uh, so, let me, this is where I break something. So if I cuss, pardon my language, but I've tried to as I was putting this one together or mocking it up, unlike almost any other time, I try to think ahead on how many times I'm going to take this thing apart, or at least an estimate, and make things easier on myself. And with this one I did, but it's still fighting me a little bit, and I don't want to break. There we go. All right. Rokie dokie here. Let's see. Put that over there. We'll get this down here. All right. Sorry for the jiggling. Here we go. Ready? One, two, boom. So we're going to start here. Uh, this is the air ride I'm using. That's the decal for the tank when it's done. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to carry the color theme all the way back to this stuff or just chrome it kind of like I did on the, uh, the Black 55. Uh, that's one of the questions I got for you guys. What do you think? Other than the battery, of course, the battery will be optimum battery painted as such. Uh, but you know, I've seen some of the low rider guys really detail these little pieces out to kind of go along with the color theme of the vehicle they're doing. So I was curious, get you guys' opinion. Uh, just let me know in the comments down there what you think. Just chrome it out, put the decal on it, or, you know, Blend, blend some of the colors of what's all in the truck onto the, the air ride system. Uh, sec and, well, we'll move right up here. All these chrome pieces you see here, there's not a lot. There's a little fire extinguisher here I got from the parts box. I'm going to strip it. The bumpers are going to be stripped. The grill's got to be stripped. Uh, the mirror. Uh, the bumpers are a gloss black. Well, not even gloss, but like a semi-gloss black. Uh, the grill is body color, as far as the flame color, I should say. And then the mirror is flame color, the green. Uh, there's another little part back here. That is the gas cap. That is the flame color also. Uh, so I got to strip all that chrome yet. Uh, this is my question for you, if any of you guys out there have it. I'm looking for some Optima battery decals. Mainly just for across the front here and the little decal that goes on top. Uh, I don't need any more than like two or three. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not tech savvy, so I, I don't know how to get on there and make my own decals. I usually, I pay somebody to do it or whatever, but kind of in a pinch right now. My one decal person is not responding. Uh, I do have another one, but he is backed up pretty good, so... Uh, if anybody does, leave a comment down in the description. My email is always on those descriptions. You can drop me an email saying, yes, I do. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you my address. Uh, if you want to trade something for them, whatever, or if you don't need something down the road, brother, I got you. Uh, it's just, you know, I kind of need them fairly quickly. Nothing super quick, but in the next week or so, I'm going to need them. We're going to move right on up here. So this is the chassis. 
I did modify the front. I still have to put the bumper braces back on. And then uh, I'll have to paint those first, of course. Uh, I used a 3D printed drop chassis. We're way out of focus. Let's try. For some reason now, this thing, there we go. So you can see that's a 3D printed print chassis that just slid right on over the frame rails. I did have to cut out the uh, core support there and put it back in. Uh, bags are in place. Get to it here. There you go. You can kind of see it. Bags are drilled for the airlines. The frame, if I can get it to focus enough. can't see it now but right up close tucked in there's a hole drilled through the frame that way the airlines can run to the inside of the frame rails uh, and they'll run all the way back to where the air ride system will be so I did have to see notch the frame not not like a normal C notch just I just clipped the frame tucked the differential up into the frame uh, that gave me just enough room to put the rear airbags in. Those are also drilled. Uh, you get a shot of the rotors, calipers. They're all painted. Rear brake lines ran. I've got the uh, differential somewhat detail paint. I still gotta do all the nut and bolts. Drain plug. Uh, so you can see what little bit of modification I had to do there. It wasn't drastic. The frame did snap on me. I had to repair it, which usually happens. But I, re you know, I retained its its natural form. The, I didn't have to eliminate and do all this other stuff. Unlike the front, I mean, I had to eliminate the molded in, you know, engine cradle, the the bumper supports, and all that just to get that on there but it's on there all my spindles are scratch made so the way I do it is my rotor will hold the wheel I don't drill out the lug nuts and the, the studs but my wheel will actually glue to to that that rotor so when I set that that width is already perfectly set my frame, when it's sitting flat on the ground, I have exact distance from the, here we go, exact distance from the table to the center, front and back. There's no, not even a sixteenth of an inch difference in the height. The width is exactly the same in the back. Now, you'll notice the front rotors are not glued on, and I just lost a part into the abyss. That, my friends, is the Obis. Part drops, it bounces, and goes underneath there. I think it's sitting right down there, if I can see down there on the right-hand side, so it'll be easy to get. Anyways, off topic. The other modifications I had to make to the frame. Get this stuff out of the way so we don't do it again. We'll turn it upside down here. And the frame is painted, of course. You can see that. We're going to... I guess we'll back up, huh? huh? We'll try to go in, and we'll go in closer. So up here where the engine sits, you can kind of see on each side, I used a round file, and I just filed it out. So my exhaust will follow and stay below, or up inside, here are the frame rails so the exhaust won't drag the ground and it runs down to here and then down to here and then it goes up with a little bend and it'll sit on top of these little I don't know what they're called but you can see one on both sides so I'm going to use them as exhaust mounts and then it'll come up you can see the notches in the frame there comes up through there 
and then you go down and up underneath to the, basically to the top of the frame and then they'll come back up and go over top of the bottom of the differential and I've got a piece kind of bent and we'll uh, we'll set this camera up here in a few minutes and I'll show you kind of how it all fits in there because then they come in and they'll come out right here that way they can come out and run down along the side of the back of the bed uh, I've already dry fitted it or test fitted it and uh, it does it does work so uh, I've got that the exhaust all figured out the engine fits perfect like you saw in the first little segment there uh, we're gonna move from right to left so first we'll go over I use this kind of marker you can use any permanent marker it doesn't matter whatever works for you but this is what I use I think I got it at either Michaels or Hobby Lobby it's got a super fine tip on one end and then like a sharpie uh, normal sharpie end on the other I use this to mark all my where I got a drill uh, where I need to shave you know when I do my body preps blah you know blah 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 uh, all that fine little detail you see me paint these are what I use these are eyeliner disposable eyeliner paint brushes you can get them on Amazon you get like a hundred for like six or seven bucks I use them over and over again, but if you, if you get them in thinner, it, it'll break the glue down that holds the bristles into the, the stem here, and then the, the, they fall out. Uh, but if you're careful, you can get four, five, six, seven, eight uses or more out of each one of these little things, or toss it in the trash can when you're done with it. But there's ultra, ultra fine, fine tip. I mean, you can really get in there and get some of that tiny detail that you normally wouldn't be able to get and do it cleanly by using one of these uh, toothpicks everybody's everybody's favorite choice I use them too drill bits now, I've got a huge variety of these things you don't have to get these but I'll tell you what I I bought all the little micro drill bits I could find and you know the pen vices I have several of them I even bought a uh, torch cleaning kit which is a small set of drill bits to get in and clean out your torch and they work great but to get that ultra tiny little stuff these are what I use and I think I get them in a six pack for like twelve dollars fourteen dollars on Amazon uh, you know they break easy but you know if you're careful and you don't put no bend on them as you're drilling or too much pressure don't drill in anything super hard uh, I just use my fingertips with them you can put them in a pin vise or a Dremel tool whatever you prefer uh, they are supposed to be carbide and, you know, hardened steel. Like, but these teeny tiny ones, they break easy. But these are what I use to get all the little tiny holes. I, I don't like seeing a big hole for a tiny little wire to go into it. So I try to match up what I'm using to the drill bit first and then drill my holes, you know, from that, that way on. Uh, so we're moving, we're moving. Here is the, uh interior floor pan uh, that's just this base coat I will flock everything and the mat will stay like a rubber ice so I won't flock that uh, detail paint the gas pedal uh, the seats I'm not real for sure the interior color like I said I, I, I don't have a really good shot it looks like the upper half or the upper quarter of the seat is a black leather and then like a some kind of a green or sage uh, lower half if any of you guys know I mean I don't think that's a stock interior in the truck so but if anybody got any ideas I I'll greatly appreciate that so like I said the bed is done it's prepped it's ready to be cleaned and painted I uh, just notched out for the differential uh, the real truck is done the same way believe it or not I, I, I was guessing at this and saying well this is how I got to do it and the little box the real truck has a little box in the back that goes between the wheel wells the wheel wells aren't modified in the real truck and they're not modified in this one so i got lucky on that guess and it all worked out good so all this is ready to be washed and primered uh and then kind of go over it again and see if i missed anything uh the cab 
and it's pretty much primarily the same. I still have to shave where you see the blue there. The door handles are shaved on the truck. The emblems are shaved off. Uh, I have a few holes to still drill on the firewall. And the truck does not have an antenna. This is one of the changes I'm making. Uh, so I do have an aftermarket antenna to put on there. I've already got the hole drilled. Uh, I did fill in the original mirror spot where it mounted and relocated up to the top of the uh, door frame like it is. Uh, back of the cab is all sanded smooth. So once I get that stuff shaved off and give that a good sand and then uh, drill those holes, uh, this will be ready for a wash and then uh, first coat of primer. The hood hinges, I'm not gluing the hinges in place. Uh, for show purposes, I will I will stand or just put them in real good uh, at the show because I want to paint them appropriately. And then I'll just set kind of the hood down on top of it at an angle uh, if that works. If not, I'll figure something else out. But I don't want to glue the hinges in place or make any permanent changes to that. I kinda, I'm kind of digging the idea of having the hinges on there and all that. The girl, she's been uh, sanded. She's uh, awaiting primer, the same as I'm awaiting primer to come in the mail. Uh, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. It might be here later today, but whatever. The flame mask probably won't be here till sometime next week, the end of next week. So that's going to hold me up again, but, you know, it is what it is. And here is the LSX. It is fully plumbed, fully wired, weathered, heat stained. Uh, starter is wired now that is just the uh, electronical side of it the battery cable still has to go down to it uh, and then the ground wire from that each let's see if we can get in here each fuel injector on this one is wired that's the green wires the alternator is wired Rad hoses are installed. Heater hoses are installed. I still can put the clamps on them. Belts are on. It is a serpentine belt. I probably got the belt direction wrong, but yeah, it is what it is. I like it. It's all that matters. I do have a throttle linkage on the throttle body. I don't know if it's going to pick that up or not. Kind of a little bit. You can see there. And then the throttle cable going back. There's another little bracket in the back that catches that, and then that'll go in through the firewall. Uh, this vacuum line here, uh, where you see it frayed out on the end, that goes into the firewall. All these green wires will get put together and go into a fuel management system, which are right there. That will go right above the engine against the firewall. The green wires will go in on both sides and then the positive and negative feet will come out of here and come around to the the ignition system which is right here it's already pre-wired so basically this end of the wire will come around into there and this will come back tie into the battery uh, i do have little decals for both that goes on the red one and one of those each go on to the black ones uh, these are all my back window decals, all the little footprints in the Chevrolet decal. These are my dashboard decals I've got so far. Uh, I still haven't done anything with the intake yet. I did pick out the which air filter I want to use. Uh, so I still got to get that assembled and then painted. Uh, all these parts are getting body color. Except for the battery. Uh, there is a decal for the battery somewhere. Whatever I did with it, I probably knocked it off. Nope, here it is. Interstate, that'll be the stock battery underneath the hood. And then that goes up on the uh, above the radiator. Uh, that's the oil filter decal. That little decal goes on the dash on the glove box. Little Chevy emblem, bow tie. These are the decals for the license plates. 
tires and wheels are just about ready. There's the front rotors. There's the electric fan. Painted and detailed. Radiator's been painted. Uh, another question for you guys is swamp cooler. Should I add it? Since I have to make some changes, just in the way I feel on these kind of builds. Uh, it is a 3D resin printed part. There's a lot of detail in there. You just can't see it and the camera just keeps blurring. Uh, so I thought about maybe doing some tiny masking on this. Whatever I decide to do on the roof and kind of carry the theme to the, the swamp cooler. Uh, let me know, yes or no, with the swamp cooler. Uh, yes or no, if you have any kind of time decals for the uh, Optima batteries. Front link control, or all the steering control for the truck. I'm using the kit stuff. So I like to jump back and forth with the uh, new age, old age, and keep some stuff original. 3D printed Flowmaster mufflers. I still haven't figured out exactly how. I think they're going to angle up underneath there a little bit to get them tucked in there. Washer fluid bottle. Uh, the overflow tank. Uh, this one just kind of runs down the side of the radiator and down to the ground. And I think I'm just going to keep it that way. I do have all the little pinstriping decals for all throughout over the body of the truck. Uh, so that's pretty much all the parts that's going to be in this build. The door panels are back here. They will be two-toned, again, with the seat. I don't know what colors those are. I'll have to figure that out. These are the pieces I've kind of bent. Uh, so give me a minute. I'm going to put you back up here and look at me. Try to wrap this video up. And we're going to, while I'm talking to you, straighten me up here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to put this in place like I did the other day, and you'll kind of get an idea of how this exhaust is going to run through here. Uh, it is not exact yet, but it'll give you somewhat of an idea on my uh, the rabbit holes I go down when I start building one of these things like this, and how I uh, see I've already messed up. There we go. Then when I test ran this, it went a lot faster. Okay. So, there we go. Dead in there, there, down in there like that. Trying to be careful because now everything's painted. Okay, guys, this is just going to be rough because this will probably be cut in two or three pieces before it's all said and done to get it to fit in here. That way I don't scratch up the paint. But, and it's not bent exactly how I want it either. But you'll get a good idea of, uh, how this is going to go. So let me lay that down here and we'll flip you back around and we'll get this done and out of here. Okay. So now you can kind of see just with the one piece. That's where it'll go up and it'll hit the headers. And it does, it, everything lines up. I've already, like I said, dry fitted this once. Everything lined up good. It comes down through all the channels. This will actually come, it'll bend down and come up and loop a little bit. Then it'll come up and over, and then it comes out through here. There's a little groove I've put in the frame back here, and it'll come out and then run along down here. And then I'll I'll do some tubes and uh, polish them up, and that'll slide on over it to give that, if you can kind of see back there in that picture, that look back there. And those will be about dragging the ground too. But that's pretty primarily how it goes. It There's more bend to it, and this will all be straighter down through here. And, or bent, you know, so it's nice, nice, smooth sweeps through there. Uh, 
it'll be cut back here somewhere for mufflers to be put in. And that's where I said it'll probably, it'll probably be two pieces minimum, three with the tailpipes. So, uh, gives you an idea how I'm running it. Uh, now if you like this, you know, give it a thumbs up, drop your comments down there, way, way down there. Uh, I read everything. I even go back through my old videos. Uh, even though there's only four up, I go back through them and check to see if anybody's left any comments. Uh, I try to answer them the best I can. Uh, let me know how I'm doing. Uh, I'm having a blast. Uh, you know, like I said, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Just wasn't sure what time I'd have to do it. Uh, who to talk to. You know, with the help of Fred Henry, for basically the past five years, me and Fred's communicated back and forth via Instagram and on the phone. Uh, you know, Jason, I, I just recently, you know, encountered with Jason over there at Blue Ox. Great guy. He kind of nudged me. And then uh, Big Will, you know, he, he he reached out in the community for anybody that was close to him to contact him that he wanted to maybe start up a club. We both actually ended up finding a club. Well, he found it and introduced me to it, and then I joined. So that's been great. Uh, but Big, Big Will has been a big, big help and a big, big influence on me to get this channel started, uh, along with Fred Henry and a few others, Jeff, uh, you know, but by watching your guys' channels, it, 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 you know, inspires me and like, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe I do have something to contribute to this. Maybe I don't, you know, I'm sure you guys would let me know right out of the gate. Uh, but I am having fun with this. Uh, I like the direction it's going in there. I may tweak some things. Uh, we may drop one video a week, go down to two, just depending on my own personal schedule. Uh, I may be able to do four. I've got some things in the work I'm trying to do. Uh, if that happens, then we may jump up to four videos a week. And that, that won't be a permanent thing, but it'll be for a while. Uh, and then there may be times that I have to jump down and only do two or maybe only one a week. Uh, I'll kind of keep you informed on all that. Uh, this video is running super long. I didn't want it to, but God bless. Peace out. This is Rusty Rotor. I'll see you Monday on the mail call. I do have a few things. Uh, a shop card came in. Uh, I did get some other materials in. We'll kind of go over all that real quick and how I'm going to modify that day a little bit. Uh, and the other days, we'll get into that more. I'm going to try to make that just a 15-minute video. Uh, so we'll see you Monday. You guys have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.